more modern physics. And now, for the world's most famous physics formula, E equals mc squared. This is a formula that's so famous that even people that have never taken a science course have heard of this formula. Now most people, when they think of this formula, they probably associate it with like atomic bombs. But let's explore this formula a little more deeply and see what it really says. Well first of all, when I look at it, I notice that the C of C squared is the speed of light in a vacuum, which is a constant, that's why it's represented as a C, and that's 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, which is already a big number, but if I'm going to take this number and then square it, I make a really, really, really big number. The M stands for anything with mass, the amount of mass. E stands for energy. So what this formula is basically telling me is that mass contains energy. And because this is just a constant number, but it's huge, a small amount of mass represents a huge amount of energy. So in Einstein's famous equation, what it tells us is that mass and energy are really the same basic stuff that's just packaged in forms that make them appear to be different. So E equals mc squared tells me that mass and energy are very closely related to each other. In fact, mass is kind of like a frozen form of energy. E equals mc squared tells how much energy is contained in a given amount of mass. And again, because c squared is almost a bazillion times bigger, so a small amount of mass yields an enormous amount of energy. To give you an idea of how much energy is stored in mass, according to this formula, the atom bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima in World War II was fueled by converting less than an ounce of matter into energy. So when you see those huge mushroom clouds, all that was converted into energy was less than an ounce of matter. The notebook that you're writing in, if converted completely into energy, according to E equals mc squared, would power New York City for a month. So all we need to do is figure out a way to have that happen. Now, E equals mc squared, though, is not just about atomic bombs. Your iPod or your iPhone or anything that uses a battery works by converting some of the mass of the battery into energy, according to E equals mc squared. So in fact, all the time, while you are using a device with a battery, the battery works by converting some of the mass of the battery into energy, according to E equals mc squared. So it doesn't have to be about atomic bombs. It just shows you that energy and mass are very closely related and mass can be converted into energy and even a very small amount of mass can, can be a huge amount of energy. Now finally we can use a unit called a universal mass unit to represent the amount of energy that's in one proton. So the universal mass unit is how much energy is stored in a proton and it is converted into an energy unit called MEVs, which are 10 to the 6th electron volts, or a million electron volts. So let's see how we do the conversion. First of all, we start with, we're going to figure out how much energy is in a proton. So we use E equals mc squared. The M would stand for the mass of a proton. So I look up on the reference tables, there's the mass of a proton. 1.66 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. And then I have to multiply by c squared, which is the speed of light in a vacuum. That's 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, which I square. So mass of the proton times speed of light squared, and this is my answer, 1.494 times 10 to the negative 10th joules. So the universal mass unit in joules would be 
1.494 times 10 to the negative 10 joules. However, it is frequently written in MeV, or mega electron volts. So let's do that conversion. We're going to convert this many joules into mega electron volts. So let's first of all just convert this number of joules to electron volts. And the way we do that is, again, look on the reference tables, and we can see that 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules equals an electron volt. So if we divide 1.494 times 10 to the negative 10 joules by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules per electron volt, we would get that there are 9.31 times 10 to the eighth electron volts, which could also be written as 931 times 10 to the sixth electron volts. But since 10 to the 6 electron volts are called a mega or electron volt, then what we can write is 931 times 10 to the 6 electron volts is 931 mega electron volts. So we finally have our, co our constant. One universal mass unit is equal to 931 mega electron volts. And what this means is the amount of energy stored in a proton is 931 times 10 to the sixth electron volts.